So the time-old question of 16 vs 14-inch MacBook Pro. If you're sitting there contemplating how to make the right choice, we have the answer for you. Due to countless hours working with both of these devices, we can give an informed opinion on the matter. So without further ado, let's get into this one. Choosing the right laptop is a huge decision, as these devices will be the main workhorse and will also provide the occasional pin session when it's time to relax. On top of that, 95% of people expect to get at least 5 years of use out of these devices, so it's a long-term commitment and all the good and bad things will compound over time. These are the 6 key points we usually consider when choosing which option to go for. Battery life being the bigger device, the 16-inch obviously comes with a bigger battery, getting up to 22 hours of video playback time compared to 18 hours on the 14-inch. 4 hours is a pretty significant number, however both of these devices have excellent battery life and 18 hours is still plenty. The 16-inch ships with a bigger 140-watt charger in the box and the smaller brother ships with a 67-watt power adapter as standard and a 96-watt charger for higher-end models. It makes sense that the bigger laptop needs a bigger charger to charge at the same speed and both of these devices can fast charge using the 140 watt charger as well. Ergonomics You would be surprised just how much bigger the screen on a 16 inch MacBook Pro is compared to the 14. However, both screens are stunning. These ProMotion Liquid Retina displays will provide an absolute spectacle for the eyes. The 16 inch has an enormous trackpad that is just a joy to use the best experience we've ever had on a trackpad. The 14 has a significantly smaller trackpad, however, it's still big compared to other similar sized competitors. Both trackpads are brilliant. The keyboards are identical, so nothing to compare here. Even though there is a significant size difference, they have the same amount of ports. An HDMI, Thunderbolt port and an SD card reader, and on the other side, you get your MagSafe charging port, two Thunderbolt ports and a headphone jack. The design has been the same since they launched the M1 chips and we do like it in compact or expanded form. Weight and portability The 14-inch MacBook Pro weighs in at 3.6 pounds and the 16-inch comes in at 4.8, which is more than a pound heavier. That extra 1.2 pounds makes a noticeable difference when you're lugging it around all day inside a backpack or laptop bag. Plus, the added footprint of the 16-inch doesn't make it easy to throw it into any backpack. An easy win for the 14-inch, which isn't light for a 14-inch laptop, but it's quite dinky when you compare it to the larger brother. Fan noise and cooling. The 16-inch having more metal and larger cooling components does make it the device that runs cooler and quieter. However, it's not a huge difference as both these devices do a great job of staying quiet and cool under workload. Real-world performance. The great thing about the 16 and 14-inch models is that Apple puts basically the same technology in both. You can opt for the base 14 inch and get brilliant performance and they are both able to be spec'd exactly the same. Due to thermal throttling, the 16 inch outperforms the 14 inch and will also be better if you need that extra screen real estate to edit videos and such. But in general, the performance on these devices is neck and neck. The speakers are pretty excellent on both devices as well, the 16 is better but the 14 inch is surprisingly loud and bassy for its size. Let's talk price. The fact that the 16 inch is $300 more expensive than the 14 inch that can be picked up brand new for $2000 really puts into perspective why the 14 has been so popular in the market in the last 4 years. And just the value that you're getting from the 14 inch is fantastic, it's a very difficult deal to beat on the market today. Whereas the 16 has a fair deal of competitors that are also doing great things. In conclusion, the 16 inch is a pro user's ideal workhorse, if they have the budget to afford it. The big screen is an excellent window for editing clips and the trackpad is huge and easy to work with. However, it's difficult to look past the 14 inch. It's the perfect all-rounder, it's much lighter and easier to carry around and even though the screen is smaller, the aspect ratio and quality makes up for all the missing inches. We personally never felt the screen to be too small. It packs great power and it gives more than enough performance for the average to even pro users. It's the sweet spot for 90% of people and we would recommend it as the one you should go for. That's it for this video. Did you agree with the verdict? Let us know in the comments below. 
And if you found this video informative or entertaining, remember to smash the like button, hit subscribe and ding the notifications bell to stay up to date with our latest content. Until next time, stay under the spotlight.